Buddy, thanks for taking the time to watch this short video where I'll walk you through the process of opening a GeoTIFF of satellite imagery or aerial photography in Quantum GIS, also known as QGIS. The process is actually rather simple. All you need to do is go over here to this icon in the top left corner, click on it with a left click. It'll open up in the window where you have the ability to open up a file. In this case, I'm going to open up a color image of Denver, Colorado that's saved on my desktop. And then you left, left click open, and that is the process right there. Here's your image, zoomed out, and if you want to zoom in, you simply use your scroll bar or your two-finger motion on a uh, app Macintosh touchpad, and you can zoom in and out on the image as you need to. You can also pan across it by left-clicking and dragging, and that's pretty much the process. So if you are using this on a Macintosh, this will look exactly the same as what you'll see. If you're on a PC, things might look a little bit different, but the icons are very similar and the process is essentially identical. Now that I have your attention, let me show you a, a couple other things you can do here in Quantum GIS. In some cases, you might have an image referred to as a 16-bit image that isn't color balanced already. And if you were to open it in the picture viewer that comes with a Mac or a PC, it'll come up completely black. In this case, Quantum GIS will actually color balance the image automatically for you. Let me show you an example here with a color image that's 16-bit from Alaska. When it loads, you can see that it is color balanced. It doesn't look quite as nice as the last image I showed you, but that's because it's an automated color balance and there will be some limits of what you can do inside of Quantum GIS. Let me show you how you can make it a little bit nicer. What you'll need to do is you'll need to go over to your layer, you'll need to right click on it, go into Properties, and this will bring up a little interface under the style band rendering you'll actually be able to work on improving the color a little bit if you'd like to. So what we'll do first is let me show you what would happen if no enhancement was done to this image so you can see what exactly that is. You can see that it looks rather strange. Um, so what we'll do here is let me try to make the screen a little bit smaller so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, we'll show you so how you can make this look a little bit better. So over here, I selected stretch max to min. And you can press apply. You can see that it instantly looks better. And what I can do is you can, you can change the different values over here, max min values, and try to make things a little bit better. So I tend to use a standard deviation. So let's just show what happens when you go to one, one standard deviation. You'll want to press load, that'll change your values over here, and then you can press apply and you can see that the image looks different. So that didn't really make it look any better. Let's go to a three standard deviation. Let's load, let's apply. Things look much better now. You also have the ability to adjust the contrast, make it a little bit brighter or what have you. Put that back to zero. You'd also be able to increase the, uh, the brightness of the image because maybe this is a little too dark for you. So in the end, when you have an image that's 16-bit, it will take a little bit of work to make it look exactly how you want to. But given enough time, you can definitely get a, a better result in the automated stretch that will start. And let me show you also the process with a black and white image, if you have that, because this program will work just as well for that. Here's a 16-bit image. Sorry, wrong button there. Here's a 16-bit image collected in panchromatic only over Boulder, Colorado. And you'll see that it will load automatically in black and white. And this actually looks rather nice to start with. You definitely can do the same process I went through last time. Go back in here and change some of the standard deviation values. A little brighter probably than I'd like. Let's go to three standard deviations. Excuse me. And you can see that it gets darker. So you can play with that as you like when you have an image. And then as a little final feature that is the part that really makes a GeoTIFF Geo is that you can actually get coordinates from the image. In this case, we're using a uh, UTM coordinate system, which is going to give you Eastings and Northings. So maybe a little bit different than you guys remember from elementary school where you learned about latitude and longitudes but it's just a different way of looking at the world and looking at coordinates on the planet. So as you move your cursor over a location, you can actually get the readout there in the bottom center of your screen 
and get the actual northing and easting value, or if you're in geographic, you could get that in latitude and longitudes. So hopefully this process has been interesting and you've learned something along the way. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.